doesn't have the visas. Hello? <laughs> Do it <mean> anyway. <laughs> Ken's trying to make me be serious. It's episode 20 of the Harmony Reads Ooh. podcast. 20. 20. Un nice. Unbelievable, yeah. eh? It's time's flying. We've read a lot of books. We're getting old. Yeah. <laughs> every day. <laughs> yeah, older every day. Um, so, Betsy's back. Yeah. Did you Hello. do a lot of reading on your cruise? No. No? My children, even though they're teenagers... They just go nonstop. Oh, yeah. Okay. I literally had to tell them sometimes, can we just have to go back to the cabin and sit for five minutes? Okay. <laughs> but then I used that time to knit. I didn't read. Ah, uh, okay. So, okay. Yeah. So, no, I really haven't read much at all. Okay. I'm a little weak on my reading this week. Uh oh. Two. Small. Oh, good. She brought the big book. Oh, <laughs> awesome. I have 20 pages left. Oh, no. That's it. That's it. I think I'd pages. like to borrow it. <laughs> you can certainly borrow okay. it. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you're, you are obviously still enjoying it. Yes. And were you reading it in the sun yesterday? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Okay. Sun. Yes. Where did it go? Yeah. So oh, yesterday, no. for us in our time, <laughs> in, in our real world. in real time, was actually the day of the eclipse. Yep. Yes. And Simone was off that day. Yep. So she was. It was a warm. It was a gorgeous day. It yeah, was absolutely it was gorgeous. Yeah. It really was. Today is the next day. It's it is not a gorgeous <laughs> day. No. Snow so showers. Snow from showers. Playing out in the yard, cleaning stuff up, and sitting in my lawn chair and reading this book. In your shorts. In my shorts. To snow showers. Yeah. yeah. That's just the way it is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Welcome she's in her t-shirt now because she was running around working hard, but it's not actually yeah. t-shirt this, this has been, um, for those that don't know, most of you have figured it out because we're usually wearing the same things on two weeks in a row. It's not, the, we, we don't wear our clothes for two weeks. And they're just, <laughs> it's because we record on the same day as the knitting podcast yeah. and release it on the next week. So um, today... If you watch the knitting podcast, you'll have seen that there's like multiple cuts in the thing and whatever. And we explain that it's been a crazy day with customers. Yeah. yeah. So just, I don't know what's going on, but Tuesday is not exactly the biggest shopping day yeah. in Belfast. On April. In, in April. In April. Yes. Yeah. But it's just nuts. But today we've had a lot of people. Maybe yeah. the sun brought them out and they just like they saw sun and just well it's got inspired to get out it was actually there's a lot of tourists here for the Ooh. eclipse oh, apparently oh, yeah. so we were listening yes. to it so there's uh there although it's mostly local people but some of them have brought friends and everything yep. so we don't complain about customers no but mm -hmm. uh we're all a little bit scattered today and a bit now getting punchy because it's now like three o'clock in the <laughs> afternoon and usually we're done this by lunchtime yeah i did have one <laughs> friend though who is an avid knitter and she texted me a couple days ago you know we're coming over for the eclipse we're only going to be in the west end where should we eat what knitting project should i bring <laughs> so i was giving her ideas um so they came and went and she said getting home last night because they decided to leave straight after like it was a long wait for the bridge yeah oh, so, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. traffic wow. was was a bit crazy but oh. i'm so glad that people could come and yes. see it yeah. and experience yes. it yeah yeah, yeah. exactly so we talked more about the eclipse. We were Ken and I were here in the mill, and we only had ninety seven percent of the total yeah, eclipse. Yeah. It was completely different than because I was talking to my my friend that was just here. They were in Mill River, yeah, and she said, "Oh yeah, you couldn't see the people like Nick like oh just like it got actually dark." Yeah, she said it was okay. black. So that sliver of sun is impressive. Wow. That's all. Yeah, because ours impressive. just became a really cloudy day. Well, just a weird color. Dull. Yeah. They, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, we're not, we've already talked about that last week. Yeah. So anyway, here we are with our books. Yes. yes. A little bit of a skimpy, we, you the thumbnail didn't show us with our big pile of books, no, like showing off, time. not this time. But, although I do have an audio one I forgot to mention to you, oh. so I can talk about that okay. one too. Okay. Yeah. So who wants to start? How about Simone? We'll celebrate your, she's on to the, on the last yeah. 20 pages. 20 pages left. Yeah. Count of the Monte Cristo. And I still love the book. Good. Right. I really, really love the book. And you'll be interested to know that I kind of noticed some parallels between this and Moby Dick, surprisingly. Oh. Is this a good I'm thing? Is that Moby Dick again? Is this a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. <laughs> well, Moby Dick is really a story about revenge. Oh. And this okay. is very much a story about revenge. Oh, oh yes, it is. Yes, it is. Oh, my God. I have never read it, so I don't know. Yeah. Oh. 
I can't. Really, is it unexpected revenge? Oh no. Oh okay. no. There's foreshadowing all the way through. So the the author drops little breadcrumbs, and you're like, I think I know what's going to happen here. Oh, I think I know who did this. Oh oh, I noticed something here, and <laughs> yeah. you're usually correct. Oh okay. But he drops a few little bombshells that oh, okay. you know you ordinarily wouldn't connect the dots on. So yeah. I just have to ask you a question because after reading all of this, how did you get down to 20 pages and not finish it? I fell asleep. Oh, <laughs> good reason. Good reason. Although I have to say, oh, 20 the, pages. The print is so Every time, tiny every time too. you open the book, it's a shock yeah. how small yeah. the print is. We've it's already shown it on other. On I other, think it's I think tiny. I might day. have to try to like buy that exact book because it looks. It looks like it opens like a Bible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, just yeah. that perfect fall. Yeah. See, yeah. As far as the actual structure of the book goes. The physical structure? The physical yeah. structure. Okay. I actually prefer something smaller. Oh. Because I find this is a little... Weighty? Unwieldy. Mm. Because what? Because when you fall asleep, it hits you in the nose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I get the cat that. going like, <laughs> what are you doing over there? Knocked out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Knocked out by the Count of Monte Cristo. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, it's it's a really good story. I'm still loving it. This is definitely a rereader. And like I said, there's there's some wild, wild revenge in this book. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay. So it's also a cautionary tale of, oh. you know, perhaps you should just let nature take its course. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, okay. okay. Don't try okay. getting into that then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because there's some... Some events that happen in the book, and I don't want to give them away in case somebody else wants to read it. Which I don't remember them. Yeah. So, yeah. so there's some unintended consequences mm. of his quest for revenge mm. that makes you think that, you know, hmm. Was it really worth it? He didn't think it? this through. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So it, it it's intriguing. The characters are wonderful. And the characters, you either love to hate them mm. or love them. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I love whenever you have characters like that. And I have to say, he's a master of taking everything and pulling it all, all together. together. Oh, okay. I love that about Me a lot of too. the classic novels. Yeah. 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 So, when will you finish it? <clears throat> Tonight. Oh, you're gonna if I don't fall thing? asleep. Can you read 20 pages of that small <laughs> <read> <laughs> Do you find with the classics that you can almost tell that there was no way that they were written, like, in a month with a deadline? Yes. Right? Like, yes. They're, they're clearly thought out, yep. pondered on for a long time, all of the little Developed. details. Yeah. 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 That's what I think I yeah. appreciate about you can read it and you can feel that there was a mm -hmm. lack of deadline, which... Yep. Mm -hmm in these cases, is a good thing. Yeah, they need so, that space in yeah. order to develop the story. Yeah. Yeah. And also, it's the kind, like, they're the kind of books, too, that you savor. Because I know right. I said that with Moby Dick, and you guys probably yeah. think I'm bonkers about that one, but, you know, it is it is a book that you savor. So yeah. Yeah. it's not supposed to be read in one sitting. Yeah. 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 And I was just, as you were saying that, about the fact that you can tell <clears throat> that the difference of the rush, rush, money, money, money yeah. now when you probably are an author that you have to deal with. Mm -hmm. Now we'll, have, we'll be able to sniff out if it's written, been written by AI. Oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. because that'll be the next thing oh, is yeah. that they're going to be written. But you, I mean, that's, I don't think, it'll be pretty hard to fool people. I think like if you can tell... The way, like the time that went into, that went into yeah. a book that a human being wrote that wasn't under a deadline or under mm -hmm. pressure, modern pressures or whatever, I'm pretty sure we're going to be. This will be an interesting study. You have me yeah. completely intrigued. I almost want to purposefully look at, maybe this will become the university course, you know, purposefully <laughs> written AI versus literature human. versus human literature yeah. and to, to actually study and see, can we see the difference of humanity in a writing versus electronic. I, I think you'd be able to tell. I hope so. I think Initially, humans anyway. are a very sensitive, we've got a very sensitive radar if we choose to listen to yeah. it about things, I think. Yeah, that'd like, be interesting. Kind of, <clears throat> and um, it's funny because I think I told this story before on the Knitting Podcast, but I had wanted... I use a, a program to do like the photo, like to, yeah. to, to edit the photos and stuff like that. And they're like touting this AI, just put, put in the description of the picture that you want and whatever. So I thought I would try it on one of the newsletters. 
And I wanted to have, uh, was when we were talking about the, probably tour de fleece or something like spinning. that. Yes. Yeah. And I wanted to have a picture of a woman spinning and I put in a lot of description, a Victorian style picture or whatever, and they couldn't get it right. <laughs> Like the hand, like they got the picture. So when I looked at it, I was like, "Oh, okay, that's really good." But then I actually started looking at it because I wanted to do some editing, and the hands were not right. They would put hands there, but they weren't in the right position. Mm -hmm. And somebody just posted on one of my feeds, um, "AI, this is what AI thinks knitting is," and it was kind of the same kind of thing because they're just yeah, mishmashing to get everything. Yeah. That's and I talked about that too about crochet. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. yeah, that I ran across. My brother sent me a picture of this beautiful looking looking crochet cat and I was like oh that's really that is really cool and then I looked closer and I'm like mm -hmm. that's not a crochet stitch I've ever seen and yeah. then a little while later he's like oh actually my friend told me that's probably AI so the, there yeah. is no pattern for it and yeah. I was like I was starting to think that because I had no idea what crochet stitch they were doing because yeah, yeah. it was you like tell. this you could tell this knitted crochet yeah, it's not yeah. a it's not a stitch that's and created. And now you you know with you if you watch I you watch YouTube quite a lot, but I watch shows on YouTube right. and I watch other like uh, other you know some kinds of mind trash like <laughs> these mind exposes trash. on stars and stuff like that. And you can tell immediately when it's AI. Yeah, okay. the, the the narrator is just still generated by it. Yeah, there's still the wrong inflection, and, and they're all like that. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they're actually getting better, but there's always a tell. Yeah. You know? Anyway, we're totally anyway. We turn, I turn it right off. So I'm not I looking love, forward to AI books. I love so. the meme I saw the other day that it was like, I don't need AI to make my art, read my books, and write my books. Why don't they do the laundry, wash the dishes? <laughs> clean the house so I can do the yeah. art yeah. and the right. writing. That's right. <laughs> anyway, it kind of makes me think of, you know, Isaac Asimov and his theory of robotics and that whole science fiction world. Is a, he a writer yeah. who writes about? Yeah, he's a very okay. prolific writer and he writes predominant or wrote predominantly science fiction, but he wrote, wrote a lot of other things too. Okay. But um, I'm not sure if you saw the movie iRobot. Yes. They did yeah. Base I, some of I saw his, advertising for it. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Okay. Movie. Yeah, some of some of his books were turned into movies. Okay. Um, anyway, yeah, he has a whole theory of robotics and okay. stuff like that. Yeah. So we're getting closer to Cautionary that every day. Oh, yeah. Cautionary oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Unintended consequences again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is almost Maybe. like tinfoil hat kind of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want <laughs> Anyway, just, you know. we'll stick. We'll stick with the books that we know people wrote. Wrote. That's, yeah. that's, that's good. right. Yeah. So and yes. and I I think that it'll be a while before. If if actually, actually if humans like really star in tune with their instincts and things like that, I think that it'll be pretty hard to hone your senses. Hone, yes. Yeah, hone your senses. <laughs> read read more books that you know are written. Yes, yes. read the yeah. classics, and then you'll know what good writing looks like. It yeah. sounds like yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So highly recommend. I know you loved this book, I so do. you loved it. But because you mentioned Moby Dick, I yeah. just want to. But those are classics. But it's it's kind of. I was just thinking that even though that is not a book that I would say I read it because <laughs> I felt like I should read Moby Dick. Right, right. And I finished it, and I liked it for what it was. But you, um, you, there was still enjoyment of reading it, even though there was a lot of things that I said about it that I was like, I don't know why he did this or well, how come he had to have a whole chapter about white and yeah. stuff like that. But you have, you have, have to have appreciation for the skill that went into crafting yeah. that story and that book. Yeah. I and also that's find, thing. I really appreciate in the classics, the way the language rolls off your tongue yeah yeah like the the word structure itself is a craft and because i'm a whisperer when i read yeah. i actually shape all the words with my mouth and so i find when i'm reading a classic just the way the language is pouring off my tongue yeah. is is poetic mm -hmm. itself yeah so, because yeah. it's not like uh verbal words being translated from no, text writing. A, yeah, yeah exactly like that's, people don't even make full sentences anymore yeah so that's what i love about like <laughs> the description and the the craft of the writing is yeah. what draws I, me in i was talking maybe i was talking i forget where who i was talking to or whatever and i was listening to myself talk i could i've started to i don't know i zoned out i guess for a minute and i was like 
You're not even speaking like the your language now is starting to get like abbreviated, clicked and abbreviated, and <laughs> you're just like it, it's it's a little bit scary. I also <laughs> love when I do try to try out some of my classic literature words, and right after I say it, I'm like, oh no, I think that was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they won't notice. I'll just keep going. Yeah. And there's certain words that are just difficult for yeah. every individual to say. Like yeah. that we all have our words. Either right? how I said it or how I yeah. used it sometimes. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I think that was Prolific right. Prolific is one of my Prolific. words. I have to oh. think about it before I say it every single Prolific. time. Okay. Prolific. Oh. Because otherwise it comes out wrong. Oh. Not right. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So we'll look forward to your final vote but we know you love it oh yeah yeah, yeah. okay i don't know what's going to happen in 20 pages but surely to heavens it it won't be disastrous and i'll end up hating the book yeah i know i don't doubt it you're in that far i think yeah. you, I, I think, think you know if you i like think it. i'll probably like it yeah yeah, yeah. That'd be good and right. did you um are you reading anything else or are you just being monogamous um, i was pretty much monogamous with this i read mm-hmm. some just trash oh okay yeah that wasn't even good enough to take to the podcast (laughs) not good enough or you don't want to admit that you read it can be both of those (laughs) can you make check both boxes it was marshmallow fluff for the brain oh yeah excellent excellent sometimes you need that yeah so um you were reading I, yeah i re- won't say a whole lot about it because i think you already talked about it yeah um so i'm reading leslie crew the one that you had recipe for a good life yes and it is it's good yeah yes. i like it um I'll, i think i'll be ready for something like i said I'm, i think i want to go look for some classics and dig into mm-hmm. that again um just because i've read several of hers now and i think i've figured out a little bit of the style yeah. we'll come back to it yeah I just need so that. now you've read three of hers or um, three or four. Oh, okay. Because I, I stopped remember. after two. Okay. But, yeah. <laughs> so this was my second so one, this one yeah. already. Yeah, I kind of read, I read one, the one before this, then I went back to her much earlier writing. Oh, okay. And then I've come back to this one. And mm-hmm. I think I, I pre, I'm appreciating her later, or her, or how do you say that? Her most recent writing. Oh, okay. That, yeah. So she's developed as a yes, writer. I would absolutely okay. say okay. that she has. So. Oh, interesting. So maybe yeah. I'll try one of her earlier her ones. Early ones. Okay. Yeah. 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 Anyway, because so, she's, a, she's a great writer. Yeah. yeah. What I'm loving about this story is the really, like, cozy feelings in around family and good food and East Coast culture. Yeah. And just, community. Yeah, because it's community. kind of, they, they spend time comparis- comparing She lives in urban Montreal, Mm -hmm. and then she goes and visits um, Cape Breton, Breton, Mm -hmm. quite rural, in Mm the 60s, I think, is what we're in. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so she's got, like, small family, and then she meets this really large family. So it's all these contrasting Mm -hmm. ways of life. And And it's, uh, there's a real simpatico kind of thing between Cape Breton and Prince Edward Island. They're, they're really, like. Are they similar? Like, I'm seeing there's differences. There's differences, but the core of the, the community spirit, everybody knows everybody. Like, you know, you could say, who's your father here? And you say it in Cape Breton, who's your father? (laughs) Same idea. (laughs) Same Same kind of thing. And we're both islands because Cape Breton is true. himself an island. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they are, yeah, they yeah. are an island. And Newfoundland have... also considers yeah. itself an island. It's definitely ignited a desire in me to do a lot of baking. Yeah. But I don't actually have the 10 children that she does in his feeding. So. Yeah, so then you'd have to eat. The I'd Simone to and I were talking about our dough babies. <laughs> no, oh, yes, our dough. So. <laughs> yeah, we've been making yeah. sourdough and eating it. Yeah, yeah. which yeah. is delicious. But, you know, yeah. it's, well, it's just a few There's of you. Only yeah. so much sourdough bread you should yeah. eat. Yeah. And yeah. I'm eating well above that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and she because it's rural 1960s and the author i think is having fun sharing all the traditional foods yeah they probably weren't actually eating all of that on oh, a regular no. basis no, 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 no. they were my, okay. my grandmother <laughs> okay. like so, yeah. i guess though if you're actually working the lifestyle that they would have worked it would have been fine but it's it's uh it's funny because i think the reason why i like that book so much is it reminds me i used to spend time in the summers with my grandmother and in um like a rural part of my grandfather was a park warden in the national park there so they lived in a house that was in not a a little it's a little it was a little community but 
And my grandmother was baking every single day. Yeah. But just... she, they didn't have 10 kids. They, there was only three kids in her family. And obviously my father and his brothers were grown up when I was there because she was my grandmother. Yeah. But she baked. But anybody that came to the warden's house to ask directions got or baking. Uh, yeah, got mm. baking. Mm -hmm. So See, every day she was baking. Maybe that's what we're missing. Yeah. We don't go to each other's houses often enough and stop by. Well, these were complete strangers baking. that were staying in the park. Okay. So they, oh. the kind of the, the, the park warden's house was, was kind of like the, the office, the office. Yeah, okay. exactly. So he had a room like in, in the house that he had the radio and he yeah. had the, you know, and the, that's where his See, I think that beaver, cool. beaver hat lived in the, <laughs> sometimes I've actually thought that it would actually be kind of fun to like, I don't know live and work like on a ranch where you just have a lot of hungry people to feed yeah because <laughs> i like making food and i like making it in large that's portions, my mother in law like, it's so funny you go to her house yeah. it's the same thing it's like are you hungry dear no i'm okay yeah. and then she'll still send you home with oatmeal pudding yeah. and homemade bread yeah yeah <laughs> exactly so that's what my grandmother did too. so i need to be a park warden that's what yeah. i need to do and everybody that came got ginger snaps yeah. Like that's where, or bread or rolls. She made rolls Something. all the time, and she made tea biscuits. I think every day. And yeah. okay, that okay. Amazon recipe, doesn't you know. come to my house that often. Yeah, but I could, you know, <laughs> Just share with the Amazon, share with the Amazon, Amazon drivers. drivers. Yeah. Anyway, so that's the that's why I, I like that one because yes. it was very nostalgic for you for okay. for me. Yeah. yeah, and I think people that um, live in a small. Um, place where community ties are still really important would find things in common with that. Well, yeah. 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 So what do you read? Are you almost done? Or? I'm not really. Oh. I'm not in a huge reading mood. Yeah. I'm super into my knitting projects right now. Yeah. Oh, and I've also started watching a slightly older TV series with my daughters. Oh, so that's okay. taking up time too. We've started the Once Upon a Time series. I don't okay. Know if, yeah, yes. it's based on fairy, fairy tales, tales mixed with modern. So they're kind of old enough now to enjoy it and understand it. And so we've kind of been binging. Oh, yeah. That. So it's taking oh. up some of my reading time. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot I was going to bring in that Three Spinners story. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll have to take it in. Yeah, yeah. We were. What were we saying about? We were, we, we, do, we were talking about the spinning thing. That was that yesterday or the day before? It was on Saturday. Saturday. Oh, yeah, okay. and we're having coffee. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was about the the treadling. The treadling. Yes. 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 Yeah. We were planning the harmony part. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so I was going to the last time I was here with you i was saying i need a palette cl cleanser like i just that was uh what, I was you think, just, what were you reading when i was awake? um the wake from newfoundland oh so oh, i yes. finished it okay yeah it was okay heavy okay he very heavy and um so i was like okay now so i don't know how i ended up starting I was gonna this say, this doesn't look like <laughs> A palette I don't, cleanser. It doesn't look like it's a palette cleanser or marshmallow fluff for the mind no it's neither so I'm uh, I'm going to try to be as diplomatic as I can. Okay. <clears throat> because this book is called To Serve, and it's about a nurse in the, from Prince Edward Island called Ge Georgina Pope, and she was touted at the time the Florence Nightingale of Canada. Mm -hmm. okay. So she um, she went to New York and was trained in the Bellevue Hospital in New York and then in the late 1800s and then shipped off immediately to the Boer War in South Africa. Mm. And then she came back and she came back and forth to PEI and then she was sent in World War I. She went into active duty there and then she even, I can't remember exactly um by world war ii she was getting a little bit older obviously she was getting but she, still, she wanted to go again to and there was i can't exactly remember and i'm not there yet in the in this book but she was introduced to me in the first book that i read by Catherine dewar which was about the nurses of world war mm -hmm. one all the nurses from pei basically she chronicled almost every one of them that went overseas and that was called Those Splendid Girls. Okay. So Catherine Dewar is a very thorough researcher, and her writing is um, in Those Splendid Girls was very much um, factual, based, but storytelling. Okay. And she told about the lives of those women and really gave you an appreciation for their struggles and what they did. And I had no idea how... 
um, you know, I, I guess I thought that World War I, there were nurses, they were trained, they showed up at a hospital, and then they worked on sick people. But in fact, they had to build the hospitals. And they were, they were intense. And canvas. There was all, like, yeah. yeah, canvas. Under the canvas. They yeah. were like, so that told a story that I had no idea about. And she did a second book, and then which is about the nurses of World War II, which I also read. Uh, but it was um, it was harder for her to get the research for the second book because some of the records are not even released yet. Mm. They're still redacted and everything oh, wow. for World War II, which Ooh. seems completely bizarre. Like yeah. what what kind yeah, of secrets almost are almost a hundred years later? Yeah, yeah. Almost, almost. Yeah, but so she that was a difficult book for her to write, and then she decided to do a book just about Georgina Pope. And I lent this to you. Yep. And then I got it back rel relatively quickly. Yep. So I was like, I got a little suspicious that maybe it wasn't as much <laughs> so interesting as uh, those blended girls. So I just had this sitting on my desk in my in the house, and I thought, well, I, I should just read it because I never read it. <sighs> it's very deep in research. It is. Every, she did an excellent if you want to know what Georgina Pope had for breakfast in 1899 when the governor general of whatever was he visiting, oh. then she's got all the details. A little yeah. more detail than yeah. you might want. Yeah, so um, the, the notes at the end of each chapter, there's footnotes that there's, I don't think I've passed a chapter yet, that the footnotes in tiny footnote writing is less than three pages. Mm. Every sentence has a number on <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> almost it's very it's heavy it's yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it is it, but it is i mean it's a love it's a no i would not lovely is not the right word to it's wonderfully it, but, researched you know, it's wonderfully researched yes. you'll know every detail about georgina pope who was an amazing woman but she really didn't do any um mm. literary embellishments at all no. okay yeah. so a bit Dry? A little bit dry. Okay. And the only, I I would think that unless you were a nurse and you're interested in nursing and exactly what they did like almost every day or whatever, right. or you're from Prince Edward Island and you know some of the people that mm -hmm. she's talking about or knew or were they part of the, because the family names are all there and yeah. stuff like that, you would find it interesting. But just as a read, like to read as a book. It's hard to connect with. It's hard to connect yeah. with. Yeah. I started it, but did not finish it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And there was so much that she talks about that if she just expanded a little bit more on it, like the Georgina Pope was uh, an amazing woman that did great things, but she also had to take time off because she was shell shocked at one point. Mm -hmm. And there was so much more of the human story that she, that she could tell, mm -hmm. but she doesn't. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I don't know. I'm not sure why because what her she's, choice was there. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. It's like she's just stuck to the facts. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And it's it's like very well researched. And mm -hmm. Catherine is. Uh, she's. I've seen her speak a couple times. And and the you know the those splendid girls was an excellent read. And she's very engaging when she speaks. Right. So I don't know. I'm starting to I'm starting to suspect hmm. as I read more than one book from different authors, I and I can understand. I think they run out of steam. It's got to be yeah. hard yeah. to yeah. to keep going at that pace, yeah, right? especially yeah. if you're in the same vein. Yeah, yeah. So um, anyway. It's not, it's not, uh, I can't say, I can't say anything negative about it, mm -hmm. except that if you want a novel, it's, it's definitely right. not a okay. novel <laughs> and it's not a biography really. No. It's research. It's facts. It's research. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, um, not hard to read because it's just like straightforward language and everything, mm -hmm. but it is like, you know, excerpts from letters that were actually written mm -hmm. and things like that. So, it's so you're not, not being engaged in a story. You're, yeah. you're yeah. just learning about. The facts of a life. Yeah, and I'm a, I'm a little bit um, a little bit uh, wondering why, because there is a lot of stuff in here that you could really tell a story about. I'm wondering if maybe she didn't want to misrepresent. Mm. Maybe she wanted to stick just to the facts, maybe. so that she didn't point. Yeah. misrepresent mm -hmm. this woman at all. Yeah, and make any know. assumptions or put any thoughts that weren't there there. Yeah, like know. she had uh, her family. She came from a, a wealthy family, which I find it's ironic that these 
these this is kind of a a different time i would say is that the the some of most of the nurses that were that in this particular book anyway that went all used their influence they came from quite wealthy families and all used their influence to get into the war <laughs> rather than out of it yeah yeah their sense of duty and they're like, mm. they're just, they want it to be there in the action mm. and like, like called to serve is, yeah. is right. And I'm, that's, I'm, that's the one thing that in my mind while I'm reading, I'm thinking, I don't know, like there's, they worked really hard to get involved in the, yeah. in the communities and stuff like that. And you used every influence they could to be shipped over to yeah. South Africa to because the border I mean, no, like Her family was not impressed by her choice of vocation. Yeah, well, they were, I'm not sure they, well, she doesn't really tell them much of the story about it. Her her uh, father was one of the the fathers of Confederation. Mm-hmm. Her brother was in like a this, I forget what the t- his title was in Ottawa, and they were mm-hmm. wealthy and right. that's yeah. it. But anyway, I'm reading it. I'll yeah. know, I'll it's know all about history. Ge- it's PEI <laughs> history. I'll know all about Georgina Pope. So now I have to figure out what I'm going to read next. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I guess and actually I we're all know. kind of in that position. Yeah. 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 Do you have something lined up? Well, oh, oh maybe. I was kind of thinking north and south. Oh. oh, yeah. My sister loves that one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've never read the book. Okay. And I used to be involved in. Uh, an online book reading club yeah. kind of deal called Old Books, New Readers. Okay. Oh, okay. And every month they suggest An older a book. book to read. Okay. And they revolve around mainly classics. Yeah. yeah. And I think for February, it was North and South. Okay. And I thought, ah, oh, that's been on my to read list for a while and i actually found a secondhand copy and it's been sitting on the bookshelf so maybe now is the time uh-huh. to, to go with it yeah mm-hmm. there you go. yeah yeah okay. i had no idea what you gonna i thought i would le- read something like kind of fluffy and frivolous but i'm i don't know i'm not really feeling in that mood mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> oh i was gonna i had said about an audiobook Oh, yeah. So while we traveled, we, we're not done yet. We listened to Rick Mercer's most recent. Right. Um, is it The Road Years? or the? Yes. yes, I think, so, or something close to that title. It was good. He's very, he um, actually reads it, and he's the actual narrator when you're listening. Is that what you call it, a narrator? I yeah. Don't know. yeah. Um, I did not, like, I don't pay very close attention to politics, I will admit that. So he's telling some stories of, because he's met a lot of oh yeah, yeah. Politicians and and most interesting to me is his take on Stephen Harper. Oh really? <laughs> I'll oh. just leave it at that. I, <laughs> I'm gonna have to read yeah. that book. <laughs> and you, you learn some things about Stephen Harper that yeah, it's it's a, that was an interesting chapter to me. Uh, oh like, okay. It was so. like the one that I read by him where he ended up going to Harvey's and having a burger with Jean Chrétien because Jean wasn't supposed to be having hamburgers. Or oh. of that sort. <laughs> yeah. So and so it's interesting because he spent significant time with Chrétien and then taught and some others, just the sort of complete difference in who Stephen Harper was compared yeah. to the rest of them. Okay. So it's interesting. I'm now. Not Maybe even, I'll have to it's change. Like, it's not book. necessarily about his political differences. It's, it's just about him as, as a person. person. Yeah. Oh, so, interesting. Yeah. So it's yeah, and there's a few things where some situations he managed to get himself into that you're Ooh, like, Mercer? Yes. Oh yeah. But you're like, oh, buddy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So so uh, it's good. I would okay. I would recommend that one. And if you can do the audio, I would recommend the audio okay. as well. Uh, yeah, so, somebody yeah. just commented about the fact that they read or they listened to oh, the audio book. Talking Canadians. Yes, that was the one. Yeah. 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 yeah, and they so, on the on the podcast they commented. Yes, that it was so really I would recommend more, this this next one because he okay. read that one. Too. He yes. was the, yeah. redoing it. It's it just it's so believable to hear him read it in his own voice because yeah. he has such an iconic Canadian. But voice. Even to read his writing too, you you still get him coming through. Yeah, yes. yeah, okay. like it it reads very much like he oh. speaks. Yeah. So I just I love hearing nice. his. Is it Newfoundland? Yeah, yes. his Newfoundland. It just he just has a slight Newfoundland accent. Yeah, and for me, as someone who hasn't wasn't born and raised in this area, there's some similarities between his accent oh, and yeah. some of the locals here that yeah. that I I'll catch every once in a while. And yeah. I'm like, oh, it just he feels so maritime. Yeah, <laughs> and it's funny because yeah. I've been studying Irish for the past couple of months, oh, okay. and I've been noticing, okay, this 
little piece here and this little piece here this is where some of our accent comes from right because yeah. you know there were so many people that came over from ireland to yeah. the east coast of canada yeah, exactly. and there's still a a thriving community yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so, so uh, that would be my a good yeah. recommendation yeah and then of course we popped some Stuart mclean in yes. now yes. and again for the girls because the girls didn't really connect with the rick mercer stuff no, too much no. but Stuart mclean they they love the i actually yeah. um they read a Stuart mclean or they did a segment on cbc um it must have been on Easter Monday because it wasn't regular programming okay. of a Stuart McLean story that I'd never heard before, oh. which was I thought I'd heard them all. But okay. now what was it about? Um, uh, <laughs> I can't remember. I just remember. Do you remember, Ken? No? Oh, yeah. Anyway, I listened to it and I was like, oh, it's weird. I haven't I haven't heard this one before. Yeah. Oh, I know what it was. It was uh, a seed blew into his car. He was talking about how you never have a clean car anymore once okay. you have kids. Right. And so he he yeah. And so he got uh, this is Dave got motivated to clean the car. And when he cleaned the car, there was so much sand in next to where the seat, oh. the driver's seat was, that a seed had blown in there. <laughs> And I had know plants. Goes. Did you? I, did you hear that? No, one? but I can you, use my imagination. Yeah. I, so you'd never heard that story no, either. No, it's worth looking no. up, and it's quite a long one. And at the end, I was almost in tears. Oh, yeah, okay. yes, it's it was, very poignant. Okay, maybe because of its length, that's why you don't hear it. He didn't I, maybe. read it maybe as often because. Yeah. Um, anyway, it was really really no, good, and I up. forget. I think it's called um, um, the Tree of Heaven. Or something like that, the tree of heaven. Okay. Do you have you heard it? No. No. Okay. No, anyway, it it's up, got then. something like that. So okay. it's uh, it was one that I never heard of. So look it up if you. It's it's long. Like it's, I think it was like more than twenty minutes. Yeah. Okay. So it was like pretty pretty long for his stuff. stuff. It's usually yeah. shorter, yeah. and uh, it has a really really good story. So yeah, or message I should say. Good. Yeah. Good. Good. All right. Okay. I think that's it. Yeah. All right. So we'll see you in two weeks if you're just a reading podcast viewer. And uh, no, next week if you're watching the knitting podcast as well. Bye. Bye.